so much, Dan, and welcome to Super Mobility Week. We are so thrilled to be at CTIA, and I'm really excited that all of you have joined us. As you can see, we've changed it up for our 30th birthday. We host TV shows. How great was it that CNBC's Squawk Alley broadcast live from the show floor this morning? And this year, we have our very own CTIA house band led by Thomas Dolby. He blends the worlds of entertainment and technology in a pretty unique way. A pop star that happens to have his synthesizer in three billion phones. Now, what do you have in store for us this week, Thomas? <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> All right. Well, Thomas, I need to personally thank you because I have always, always, always wanted my very own British quest love. Take that, Jimmy Fallon. So the differences that you see up on stage are representative of the changes that you will see all around you this week. The concept behind Super Mobility Week is to pull together the entire mobile ecosystem. We are no longer only one trade show. We are now 34 shows, events, and partners. We have hackathons, car shows, home builders, and a lot more. For those brand new to CTIA, welcome. We are excited that mobility is more and more central to you and your world. For our veterans, I encourage you to walk the floor. You'll be surprised to see what is new. Looking back just 10 years ago, wireless meant carriers, vendors, and tower companies. A voice and text business in a flip phone world. And that was our show's footprint and our association's worldview. Today, it means all of those things and much more. Today, we are voice, text, plus video, cars, homes, health, retail and enterprise, and pretty much every other sector. So to showcase mobility in 2014 means to showcase the connected life, our mobile life. And the reality is that one tent or one convention center can't hold all of the innovation and excitement in our mobile life. And this week is the Mobile Industries Week all around the globe. Whether it's on this stage, behind you, on the show floor, at IFA Berlin, the world's largest consumer electronics show, or at today's announcement in Cupertino, all of this is Super Mobility Week. And I couldn't be more excited to join CTIA in this dynamic industry at this remarkable time. The US today is the envy of the world with respect to mobility. We are the clear leader in all that is 4G and LTE. 90% of the new phones in the United States are smartphones. In Europe, only 2 thirds. The United States has 47% of the global LTE subscribers yet only 5% of all mobile subscribers. I can go metric by metric, or I can let her do it. But these figures, no matter how impressive, don't scratch the surface of the level of innovation going on across our mobile ecosystem. Carriers, apps, handsets, operating systems, all of this innovation is happening right here in the United States, improving our lives every day. And this is not by accident or luck. The lion's share of the credit goes to you, the entrepreneurs, large and small, that have created, fostered, and inspired this mobile ecosystem. But the role of the government is unmistakable as well, in two significant ways. First, wireless innovation needs spectrum license spectrum, and lots of it. 4G can be directly linked to the successful auctions in 2006 and 8, which have helped enable much of the innovation we see today. Chances are your phone right now is using the spectrum sold in those auctions. And the wireless industry showed up to those auctions with $32 billion. All in all, wireless carriers have spent $53 billion to purchase spectrum an unbelievable down payment and investment in our wireless future. 
And number two, reflective of the dynamic and competitive nature of this industry, Congress and the FCC have treated the entire mobile ecosystem with a light touch. This regulatory framework has been conducive to and supportive of world-leading private investment. $33 billion last year and $260 billion in the past decade were poured into U.S. mobile networks. Here again, we lead the world. We spent four times more than the rest of the world in network infrastructure per customer. Looking ahead, as mobility becomes even more vital to our lives, it will also become more central to government policy at home and abroad. Leaders across the globe are embracing 5G, not as a wireless technology, but as an economic development plan. Now, in this room, we all know that 4G and LTE are really just starting. We are just beginning to see the, some of the remarkable features of this technology. But history has taught us we can never sit still. One missed innovation cycle is a generation lost. And falling behind has never had larger consequences for consumers or this country. As mobile becomes more and more central to innovation across industry sectors, losing our lead, losing our innovative edge, means falling behind, not only in networks and technology, but on healthcare, elder care and diagnostics, retail and banking, home automation, energy conservation, and well, connected everything, cars, appliances, farm equipment, pretty much everything but the family dog. You know what, even the family dog. As other nations design policies to jumpstart more investment, what will we do? I, for one, am optimistic. The innovative energy is here. We have a 4G jumpstart in a dynamic industry to propel us ahead. We are just beginning to understand how mobility can optimize our lives. And when we think about the connected future, we will need to navigate the halls of government. Our light touch regulatory approach must remain in place for us to stay global leaders. The alphabet soup of agencies that we are or will soon be interacting with can be daunting. The United States can take the steps needed to incubate and champion mobility. At CTIA, we will continue to fight for mobile-specific solutions across agencies with rules reflective of our technology and our dynamic competitive environment. We will work to keep an open internet, one that preserves the incentives and the ability of all to innovate and invest. CTIA and its members strongly support an open internet and need an open and dynamic platform. Competition and consumers demand it. In fact, the mobile providers have supported an internet openness since the inception of mobile broadband. We always will. But we challenge the call by some for regulators to layer on more intrusive and inflexible regulation, simply because the mobile platform is thriving. We will push infrastructure reform, tax modernization, and a national framework that promotes investment. In a nutshell, we will work hard to keep the government out of your way as you recreate and reimagine our world. Our connected life aspirations will ultimately succeed or fail because of our underlying mobile infrastructure. Is the connection fast enough, secure enough, reliable enough to support all of these new uses? And that comes back to Spectrum. In 2008, the government started calling for 500 megahertz of new commercial spectrum. Since then, mobile broadband has, demand has grown 51 times. The projections of growth that were dismiss, dismissed at that time were, in fact, right on target. And the growth continues. Mobile data doubled last year, and the future holds years more of triple-digit growth. Consumer demand for tablets, wearables, mobile video, and the Internet of Things will only put more pressure on our networks. And that means we need more exclusive, cleared-use spectrum. That is how we became 4G leaders, and that is how we will stay on top. Now, spectrum policy is harder than it used to be, unquestionably. 
but the harder does not mean that we walk away from a successful approach. In Washington, D.C., we spend too much time on false spectrum choices, licensed or unlicensed, cleared or shared. Given the demand, given the growth, given our connected lives, the answer must be all of the above. One recent study found that the U.S. had the third lowest amount of spectrum dedicated to LTE. The third lowest. Leading the world in investment and engineering know-how can't make up that delta forever. So how do we close the gap? The recently authorized AWS 3 and broadcast 600 megahertz auctions are a great start. We must make sure that these auctions succeed. We hear that the wireless carriers may sit out these auctions. Really? Given our track record and our growth trends, I'm incredulous that anyone claims with a straight face that operators won't bring billions of dollars to every future auction. In truth, we are already wrestling with what the next spectrum bands will be after these auctions. Where is the next 100, 200, 300 megahertz of spectrum to keep our economy and our industry growing for consumers? We need to work together to shrink the gap between auctions. Six years between auctions is an eternity in our space. Thank <music> you.